No intros this morning. We're diving straight into learning D5 in under 10 minutes. So let's get started. Today, we're gonna to be using this Archicad model and importing it direct into D5. Now, don't worry if you don't have an Archicad model. I'm gonna link a version of this down in the description below so you can download it and use it. First of all, let's have a quick look at D5. Once we've started a new job, it's going to look exactly like this. On the left-hand side, we have our scene organizer where we're going to create all of our still images. Underneath, we have our layers, both our objects and our imported. Up the top, we have our lights, we have our path tool, our brush scatter tool, particles, additional scatter, and of course, terrain. All these we'll cover a little bit later. Then on the right hand side, we have our environment and our effects. So the UI in D5 is extremely user friendly and simple to learn. I'll show you how to use all of these as we run through. So first things first, let's go to ArcCAD, let's get our model imported. All we need to do is hit the D5 sync button. Give it a few seconds to sync into D5 and it's automatically there. Now, the first thing we wanna do is unlock the model and just drag it up a little bit so that everything is sitting above the natural terrain. Now you'll notice I'm clicking the right hand side of my mouse and it's simply orbiting around. I can push the scroll wheel to pan and zoom. However, that isn't the most ideal way to use D5. In the top right hand corner, you're gonna see little man with a circle arrow around him. If you select that, go down to fly, then we can use our S and D keys and our Q and E key to go up and down. So just like any other video game you've potentially ever played, any other rendering software, even ArcCAD itself, we're just gonna fly around with, with W, A, S and D keys. Now we're still gonna use the right button on our mouse to pan and orbit and move around. Now, if for whatever reason you didn't wanna pull your model up and you actually wanted to adjust the terrain, then you simply click on terrain on the left-hand side in your objects palette and we begin to sculpt, paint or manage. So the easiest thing is to simply sculpt it, you press the downwards arrow, and you can push all of your terrain down to create some sort of mountain forms. Now, obviously I don't want that, so we're just gonna simply undo. Now let's get into it. The first thing I like to do in D5 is set up my first camera scene. So fly around until you're happy with the first camera scene. Hit create new scene on the left-hand side. It will automatically create scene one, which if we fly around and then press back to scene one, it will automatically bring us back. After I have my scene created, then I like to adjust my environment. Two ways we can do environment in D5. We can either use the Geo Sky, which is incredibly simple to use. We have our sun that we can simply just drag and move around. So if we wanted 6 a.m. instead of 6 p.m. or if we wanted 3 a.m. nighttime renders, we could just simply move it around the sphere. So in this instance, something like 6.30 in the morning looks pretty good to me. If you want a bit more fine tuning, you can play with the north point to adjust the sun around so you get the perfect shadows for your project. After which we can play with our cloud settings or we can simply turn the clouds off so we have a perfect blue sky. All the sliders for cloud, fog, wind, precipitation, Milky Way are pretty much the same. And you just click and slide around to adjust until you're happy with the desired outcome. So if you want thicker clouds, more clouds, higher up in the sky, if you wanted them to move quickly or not at all, you could adjust all of it by simply clicking and dragging across. The alternative method for first time users is a HDRI sky. Now, HDRI sky is super simple. You can simply just click on the HDRI presets here, or you can add a custom HDRI sky as well. If you're a D5 Pro user, there's so many other benefits, but we're sticking to the free features today. So let's say we want sunset 02, we press on sunset 02, it'll automatically adjust our background and scene. Now, personally, I like to turn on the sun and make sure the sun affects everything. And then all we need to do is rotate our north point to get the glow and shadows we're looking for. So now we have our Geo Sky and our HDRI Sky set up and they're completely different renders. However, one important step that you wanna do right now before you go any further is of course, come back to your scene one and refresh or update the scene by pressing the update button on the left-hand side. If you don't, every setting you've just made to the Geo Sky will completely disappear and you'll have to start again. If you wanted a HDRI option, then you can simply change to HDRI and create another scene. So now we have scene one, which is our Geo Sky, and scene two, which is our HDRI Sky. If you wanted to fine tune it just a little bit more, you can come into effects on the Geo Sky as well as on the HDRI Sky and simply just tweak some of these sliders. So for instance, if I turn off local exposure, it gives me a lot more control over my scene, which allows me to fine tune it just the way I like. Again, 
update before we go any further. Now, even though this looks relatively good straight out of that CAD, we want to add some materials from D5. So the first thing we want to do is press assets up the top. Now under assets, we have model, material, particle, scatter, HDRI, and terrain. Like I spoke before, HDRI has heaps of pro features, but we're just sticking to the free stuff today. If we go to material, the first thing you want to do if you're on a free account is hit filter and go free only. There's no point seeing all the pro features if you can't use them. So we stick to the free stuff and we continue moving through. The first thing we want to do is type in grass and search for our basic grass material. Then click on basic grass material and click on the grass in the scene. That will automatically create 3D textured grass for everything that has that material. And if you don't like the grass and you've clicked off it, simply come up to the top left hand corner, click your material picker, select the grass, and then we have a few items to play with. So there's six default options for the grass. And if we click through them, you'll see them automatically change. Me personally, I don't mind this third one here, but I do like to adjust it and make it darker because Australian grass is quite dark. After that, I trim my grass down to make sure it looks freshly mowed and I leave it at that. Similarly to grass, we have a glass element that has a spanner on it as well. So if we come back into our assets, type in glass, we scroll down and we look for basic glass material. Now the glass in this model is on this building, but it's also behind the rain screen. So to make matters simple, we're just going to select the glass over there on that building to the left, which if I fly in automatically changes all the glass and reflections on my model. The same way we added grass and we added glass is how we're going to add our concrete, our metals, our woods, all of it. We simply go through, click onto the respective D5 asset and then click onto our model direct. Now, if we have a material that isn't perfectly aligned to our model, let's say this blue over here, we'll go to our aluminum alloy, select it, click on the blue and it will go silver. That's fine. Next, we want to go to our base color, adjust our sliders to get to a blue color, and then we want to manipulate the texture until we're closer to our deep ocean. That and then I can adjust my sliders, my metallic, my roughness to just fine tune and tweak until I'm perfectly happy with that color. After which, we just repeat for the rest of our model. Once we've added most of our textures, I want to show you how to adjust to create an illuminated material in D5. So I've selected these strip lights along the back wall, which in my model is glass lamp. But in D5, it doesn't show as illuminated surface. So what we want to do is come up to material template, change to custom, turn on emissive, change temperature. Let's go 3000 and then intensity we can set whatever we want. Obviously it's daytime, they're not going to be too bright. So 5% emission is probably going to be appropriate. But if you really want it to stand out, just increase that to 20 50, 100, whatever you really wanted. Next, we want to add some assets to our D5 model. And that's super simple. Same system, go up to assets, go to model, and make sure free is toggled on. Under nature, we have all of our trees, our shrubs, our plants. Then additionally, we have characters, animals, vehicles, and so on. As an example, to add an object, we find something we like. So let's go broadleaf citrus lemon tree. Let's say we want to add it here. Once we've clicked on it, it basically automatically creates the model. We press once and we can then continue to click that same asset or we hit escape to stop using it. If I wanted to fill my planner boxes up with shrubs, I come down to shrubs, find the generic shrub I like, and then just start clicking my way through. If I wanted to copy an asset or an object over, I can select that asset, go on one of these pointer arrows or even the main adjustment square, hold shift and drag, and it will duplicate that asset. If I select the middle square, it will automatically make sure that asset is aligned to the surface below, which makes life super simple. Next, I might want to add some vines to the side of my wall. And if for whatever reason, they're not aligned the right way, I can just tap the R button on my keyboard and it will rotate at 90 degrees to make sure it's aligned the way I need it. To finish off our assets, I want to add in a car and some people with vehicles. We don't have too many to choose from as free assets. So let's just take this Tesla Model 3, which they call New Energy Car 01, drop it into our scene. And the first thing you will notice is the car's moving. So we'll select the car and then we can turn off dynamic so it stops moving. If you want a driver or left-hand side, simply toggle them on and off. And I like to turn the lights on because it looks nicer in a render. Just reduce the lights at daytime. And if you needed a different color, drop the menu down, hit the color, and you'll get a red Tesla, white Tesla, whatever you want. Once our assets are in, then we can go ahead and either render out our image or create a video. Simply to edit out the image, we go up the top, we hit the image button. We can then adjust our focal length, which I'm generally happy with 31. 
So if you wanted to change it, 35 is an example. Update your scene. Export it as a 6, 8, 16K render, whatever you want. Update your scene. And then two options for rendering out an image. You can press the render button or you can add it to the render queue. Once you've added it to the render queue, in the very top right hand corner, you see render queue and that image will be available to render out in batch. Alternatively, you want to create a video, simply come to video, add current camera view, move to your next camera view, press the plus button and then repeat as you see fit. If you wanted to go faster, slower, you can change the three seconds to 10 seconds, five seconds, whatever you wanted. And of course, you can adjust your environment, your effects on the right hand panel for each individual video as you require. If you wanted to jump from that front scene to another scene so the camera didn't meander through, simply move to the next position, create a new view, repeat the steps, create a new camera, and then if we press play, we have our video jumping from scene to scene. And that's it, you've mastered the basics of D5 in no time at all. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. But like always, I'll see you next week.